Hello everyone, this is Matthew Fraley with BreakpointTrades.com. We've been bringing you advanced technical analysis, market commentary, trade ideas, and mechanical trading algorithms like you see here. Been doing that since 2003 for individual traders and professional institutions, which I consult with weekly. So basically about 20 years now we've been doing this. Anyway, this is a going to be a comprehensive newsletter on the market. So let's go ahead and get started. This is my back end recording for our standard um, web audio. So let's go ahead and start that. Hello, everyone. This is Matthew Fraley with BreakpointTrades.com. First off, hope everyone's had a nice weekend so far. This is a comprehensive weekend newsletter and it's Sunday, January 29th, 2023. Again, you can see the table of contents here. The newsletter is divided into eight major sections. If you happen to be new to this weekend newsletter format, these tend to be very comprehensive, we usually take anywhere from 40 minutes to an hour. So we're very comprehensive, especially you know, on YouTube. These aren't meant to be you know, made for clickbait, cut down to 10 minutes to get the masses. We go over the details, look at the meat. And um, anyway, so you can see divided into eight major sections. Like I said, I hope everyone had a nice weekend. For the week, the market once again had another nice rally. The triple Q's big cap tech led, which is what we've been expecting, which we've been saying over the last month. The Q's gained 4.7% for the week. S&P and Russell both gained about 2.5%. The Dow gained the least 1.8%. Remember, we're seeing the opposite of what we saw Last year, last year, the Dow led. It was down the least. The Qs were down the most. This year, we have the complete opposite so far. So for the month of January, the Qs are now up 11.3%. So that's a big move in one month. S&P is up 6%. The Dow Jones, again, lagging, only up 2.5%. Sometimes as the month of January goes, so does the rest of the year. So it, it is a positive for the market, but again, that's a long way off. And given the backdrop, you know, way too early to be calling for, you know, a positive end of the year just based on January. But strong January, as you can see, right? Again, to me, it became obvious that the market put in a decent low in October. We had five clear waves down. Whenever you have five clear waves, you look for a trend reversal. We got that. Then we got five waves of the upside and a wedge. I then looked for a pullback higher low, which we got. Favored roughly a 50% pullback, which we got into um, early January. And my upside targets, which I talked about two weeks ago, have been about 4150 to 4300, 4350 on the S&P over time, okay? And uh, we also favored the market holding up an earnings season, and so far it's done that. Short term, what am I seeing? The S&P has recovered and held the 200-day moving average. It also took out the year-long downtrend line connecting those lower highs. It's now support. Next resistance is 4,100 area, which we got within six points on Friday. Short term, we're quite overbought here. February also tends to be one of the weaker months seasonality-wise. So, you know, the question is, do we rally up higher in part of February then sell off or do we have a correction, you know, some sort of consolidation in February and then we attack those, you know, maybe higher levels, 4,300, stuff like that. After that, we'll see. Again, there's a lot of complacency already in the market. A lot of members are calling, a lot of people are calling this a new bull market, even a lot of our subscribers. And like, who knows, maybe they're right. My thing is be flexible, be like water as um, Bruce Lee used to say, don't be locked into any one thing. You know, both the bull and bear cases a lot called for higher prices, and that's what we've got over the last month. Okay. So, you know, I still think that perhaps we're in a longer bear market that could last two or three years, sort of like we saw in the 2000, 2000 to late 2002 market. Okay. And in there's periods like that, you could have periods where the market's up trending for three to five months. Maybe we're in one of those periods, okay? Now, at the very bottom here, like I said, we do know that a recession is coming. The question is how deep will it be? Number two, it's gonna all be about earnings and that will direct where the market goes. Number three, Mike Wilson, the named, the famed Morgan Stanley analyst warns that we are gonna see earnings degradation and the market will eventually head lower. 
He's the one that called the bottom in October. And unfortunately, Russia remains a wild card. If they were to attack a Western nation or use a nuke, clearly that would have profound market consequences. So be aware of that. And let's go ahead and get started here. So first image below, item number two, this is a seasonality chart from Stock Traders Almanac. Again, seasonality wise, you know, the weakest month of the year is obviously September, usually from a historical standpoint, some weakness in August, June, but February tends to be one of the uh, weaker months too. So we'll see if that ends up being the case or not. Next, item number three shows the index sector table, what transpired. Last week, you can see the major gains for the index. It's like I said, the triple Qs, tech led. The Dow was up the least. As far as the major market sectors, almost all the 21 sectors here were up, save for healthcare and drugs. Um, currencies, US dollar, up a tad, 0.1%. Remember, it's been downtrending for quite a while here. I'm kind of wondering if it's set to do some sort of, you know, rally here anytime that could correspond with some sort of pullback in the market if we see that we'll see cryptocurrencies have been doing well they've had a really good rally out of some basing patterns along with the market commodities last week they were kind of a mixed bag gold precious metals finally sold off as you can see and uh, as far as commodities we saw weakness in crude oil the index natural gas continues to be weak you can see we had strength in the agriculture area. And bonds below, TLT was up a half percent. Next, item number four shows the economic news calendar. So Tuesday, we have the PMI. Obviously, markets are going to look at this, ISM on the first. Again, also, we have the jobs report on Friday. So a lot of economic news here and, of course, Earnings. We're still in earnings season, guys. It's kind of been a mixed bag for earnings. All right, let's go ahead and move to the index charts. First chart below, item number five, is a. This chart shows you a monthly chart of the five key major indexes, the Dow at the top here. Again, you can see for the month of, of January, the Dow, like I said, was up the least. It was up 2.5%, 6% up for the SP. My amazing 11% up for the NASDAQ area. They've been outperforming. Remember, they underperformed the most last year. They're outperforming now. You can see the NASDAQ rallying, finding support over the last few months, right around the 38% FIB retracement. And I'm talking about FIBs going back to the 2009 lows to the recent highs in late 2021. So that was a major area. Bear markets, guys, at minimum, usually retrace 38%, and we did meet that. Next. Chapter 6, here's a quarterly snapshot of the major indexes. So each candlestick represents three months or one quarter. Again, we're obviously far from the end of this quarter, which is uh, March 31st. But you can see the middle Bollinger Band tends to be long-term support in bull markets, and um, that was support here last year again i still don't think we're in a bull market i don't think this is a new bull market again i could be wrong but we logically rallied off the middle bollinger band on the quarterly charts and uh that was to be expected next let's go ahead and move back to the s p 500 charts our proxy so here's the this chart each candlestick represents one year so usually in bear markets price will revert back to the mean. And I'm saying the mean is the nine year EMA, just like you see back here in the early 2000s, 2007, eight. We briefly went below the nine EMA, nine year EMA in March, 2020. Then it quickly recovered. And this current bear market, we did not make it to the nine year EMA last year. And currently, of course, we're up this year, 6%. I still believe some, if we're still in a bear market, we'll eventually undercut this over time. Again, guys, sometimes bear markets can last two or three years. We could be in something like that. Again, we'll see how this unfolds. We'll adapt to whatever, un we'll adapt and trade whatever unfolds in front of us and not be locked into any one thing. But otherwise, this is what I favor. Next. 
Chapter 8, here's a monthly view of the S&P, again, showing you the bull market uptrend we had from the 2009 lows, which ended in a fifth wave high in late 2021. Nice up month for January so far, up 6%. Next. Chapter 9, here's a weekly chart of the S&P. A couple of things. I showed this chart two weeks ago in my newsletter, weekend newsletter. So... First off, you can see we finally broke this weekly downtrend line, one year downtrend line connecting all the lower highs. We finally took that out last week, also got above the 200 day moving average and held that. So what I drew a couple weeks ago was the symmetry. And I said, if we were to have a perfect one to one symmetry, it would measure up here to around, you know, 40, 4360, 4350 and a 61.8% FIB extent, FIB would be roughly 41.40. So, so far this has been playing out. Another thing to monitor here at the top is the RSI. Notice I drew a nice clean horizontal line here. This area in the um, mid 50s has been acting as resistance. We'll see if we can clear that. Next. Chapter 10, here's the weekly KISS trend system. So this went back long a week ago, as you know. Now we're right at or near the weekly ATR. And that's been an important area, the average true range. This is a weighted average true range, by the way. But you can see last year we stalled in that July time frame, August time frame. And then, of course, in August we stalled near there. So we're right back here. I think ultimately we're going to break it. But, we'll, but this is obviously a resistance area. Wouldn't be surprised if we also paused here a little bit. A couple of these other standard indicators. Well, you can see the moving average ribbon is trying to flip back positive. It's kind of pinching here. The MACD is recycled back to the underside of zero. That's an important area. The 60 stochastic here, still a ways away from that 50% level. Next. Chart number 11, here's the daily KISS trend system. So the daily trend systems on the indexes went back long. The S&P has two tr a higher low trailing stops here. We call these smart trailing stops. The triple Qs went back long a week earlier and they have four stops in place. So they're doing better at the moment. Look at these KISS trend systems, again, are more designed for bull markets. And last year they went long, you know, for short periods of time, usually one or two months and then got out like you see here in um, the November, to December time frame, and then of course the July to August time frame. So the systems are back long. As I like to tell people, if we are in a new bull market, the systems will catch it. If the bear you know, bears comes back again in strong fashion, the systems will get out. A couple other things on here. Again, the moving average ribbons, these are great guys. You can see how they were pinching a, about a week, week and a half ago on a bullish configuration. So they went they flip the bullish configuration and the first squeeze. It's this first squeeze that gives you very low risk trade opportunities, which is right here. Next, chapter 12, here's a standard daily S&P 500 chart. So again, we broke this year plus long downtrend line. You know, a few times we've, went, prices went over the 200 day moving average and lost it, but it has now been above this for quite a while, the longest since um, March 2000, March of last year. The broken downtrend line is now support. The 4100 area is a big resistance area. That was previous support, turn resistance. Though so we got within six points of that on Friday. We'll see if we, if we go up higher, that's my first target. This is a logical area to maybe have a consolidation from. The broken downtrend line is now support here. Um, this shows you some of the FIB projections. Again, a one-to-one -one symmetry would have the target up around 4350. Another one would be up around 4150. The, the scenario I favor is, again, we had clear five waves to the downside in October with MACD divergence. So after that good rally, that rising wedge, I favored a higher low, which we got roughly a 50% FIB retracement here in December. My favorite view has been that is an A, B, and we're working on a C, okay? Now, if you're in the bullish camp, you could this could be a one, two, 
three. I don't favor that, but that's what it could be. So, but you could see both counts have been aligning. So as I've been telling people, it really doesn't matter. You know, when if the S&P gets up to these levels, then we can start, you know, look, reconsidering things if it gets above here. But for now, both my more bearish count still aligns up into this area where this wave three does. Again, you're on a pullback, we get one. These areas are support, the broken down trend line, and those move on averages. Next, chart number 13, here's another daily chart without all the indicators. So again, this is the chart I've been shown for a while. Like I said, we had a decent low wave five in October. One way to mark that would be a wave A. Another, you could see here, A, B, C, and purple, which is what I favor, the bullish view, and one, two, three. Next, chart for 14, here's another daily chart. This shows you a parallel channel. So another thing to watch if we get a follow-through rally earlier this week around this uh, trend line of the channel and, of course, the 50% of FIB. By the way, the 61.8% FIB, notice how it perfectly corresponds with that August high, 43.25, so low 4,300. So this is an important area up in here. And again, under a bear market rally, you could get up into these areas. Next, chart 15, here's a clean Rinko chart. I like these Rinko charts. This, is a, this one uses a box size of 30. You can see we're breaking this trend line here. And you can see how clearly this is your next major important area. Next, chart 16, here's a two hour view. Last week or last week we were showing this coil, which we busted out of. You got some horizontal resistance up here at 4,100, obviously. So, you know, one thing that could happen if we get a pullback, like something like this, and then we rally up and break it. That's one option, okay? Next, chart 17, here's a two hour view. You could see we're up at this resistance area. Like I said, this area was a big base. We had five waves down here, then we based out, and then we broke above that, which became support. Now we're some resistance. Next, chart 18, here's a 30 minute chart. Again, we had this base here, which we talked about. We came out of that base. We formed a clear five wedge, which played out for a nice short, but notice price pulled right back to this support area bounced perfectly off of it we had we were spotted that well and then we've had a good rally up here now notice as of friday we noticed the dotted red that's a perfect symmetry and that's roughly where the s p stalled out on friday before that uh late day pullback we also have some rsi divergence and macd divergence next Chapter 19, here's a 15 minute view. You could see a little rising wedge here. So if we get a pullback on Monday, one area to watch are these FIBs. 38% FIB, 50% FIB would be potential targets. Next, Chapter 20, here's the four time frame showing some of our custom indicators. The daily up here on the upper left, you know, we were well above that resistance area. We're above the ATR and all the time frames. Again, we just got a little overbought here. So now we'll see the ATR is support on pullbacks. Next, chapter 21, here's the Dow. The Dow has been forming this coil as I've been showing. So we tested that trend line of the coil on Friday, pulling back. This could be a, a this could be a one, two, three, or an A, B, C, D. And you need to meet maybe an E pullback. Next, chapter 22, VYM. That's my favorite large cap dividend play. That actually did the best last year, only down about 0.4% in 2022. It's forming a big coil here. So this is kind of like, owning this ETF is kind of like being in the Dow, but you get uh, quarterly dividends. Next, chapter 23, triple Qs, monthly chart, again, up 11.3% for the month. You can see it's been finding support at the 38% FIB retracement, or 61.8% FIB retracement from the March 2020 lows, logical area. Next, chapter 24, here's the weekly chart. We finally broke over the weekly downtrend line here, testing the 50-week moving average. Here, the largest rally in that downtrend was back here in March into 
July. And if you add a symmetry target here, it would measure up roughly to 320-ish area. Next. Chapter 25 is a daily chart showing the same downtrend line, which we clearly took out last week and more over the 200-day moving average. Triple Qs have been outperforming, been playing a lot of catch-up lately. Next, Chapter 26, here's a clean Rinko chart. You can see the trend line here and uh, long-term resistance up into this area, 325-ish. Next, Chapter 27, Triple Qs, two-hour view. You can see the steep uptrend channel. We're testing the upper area of the channel. Moving average ribbon is very wide here, so it would make sense to have some sort of consolidation in here. Next, chapter 28, here's the KISS trend system for the triple Qs. Like I said, this went long well before the S&P, and it has four higher low trailing stops, smart trailing stops. So the current one is 279.30. So it's been outperforming, and it's went long before, and it has it's been raising its stop more aggressively. Nice to see that. Next, chapter 29. This shows you the four time frames. Again, quite overbought here in the very short term. You can see some of these candles. We had a mark 13 on the 60 there. So a little overbought. Next, chapter 30. Here's the Russell 2000 weekly chart up to about 2.5% roughly. Obviously, last year it found support here, which was previous resistance. Became support. Next, Chapter 31, here's the daily view. All right, guys, that does it for the indexes. A quick check on futures. ES futures are down about six points currently. Let's move on, look at some market sectors. Chapter 32, XLK technology, weekly view. You can see it's testing this weekly downtrend line. Slight under, slight break of it. We'll see if we get follow through or not. Next, chapter 33, here's the daily. Still a little ways to go before you get to this horizontal resistance. Obviously, it's above its 200-day moving average now. Next, chapter 34, here's XLC. That's the communications ETF. Um, the weekly chart here, we did have a bullish break in symmetry, so that's a positive. Next, chapter 35, XLF Financials. They've been strong for the last several months, as you know. They bottomed in um, October, right at that 200-week moving average. Guys, on a weekly chart, the 200-week moving average is important. So next, chart 36, here's the daily chart. Kind of has an ascending triangle here. Hasn't really confidently broken out of here yet, but it looks decent. Next, chart 37, here's IYT transports. Got a little horizontal resistance here to monitor. Looks okay. You got support down here, the moving averages. Next, chart 38, biotech. Biotech broke out of this coil couple weeks ago, but it hasn't really powered out of here. It's just been kind of drifting higher. Volume hasn't been impressive. I'm long some of this, but you know, I really want to see it get going. You do have a higher low here for a stop if you want to give it that much room or the 9 EMA. Next, chapter 39, XLE Energy. Nice pullback on Friday. Again, it's up here at some highs near resistance, not surprising. Again, this has been one of the strongest sectors over the last year. Next, Chapter 40, here's the weekly long-term chart. This is a logarithmic chart. Again, it's in a long-term uptrend. Next, chapter 41, XOU utilities. Kind of in a channel here. Next, chapter 42, XLI industrials. Very strong sector. This is a weekly chart. It's not very far away from those 2021 highs, quite honestly. Next, chapter 30, or 43, here's the daily. Got sort of a ascending triangle look to it here. Still may need, may, need, may need to oscillate in here for a bit before it breaks out of it. Next, chapter 44, XLP, consumer staples. This tends to move opposite of the market. So it's been moving down as the market's been rallying. Kind of has a bear flag look to here at the moment. Next, chapter 45, Couple comparison charts. Here's the S&P versus the emerging markets. Again, emerging markets has just been unbelievable here. We talked about this back in November, October, and it's been one hell of a rally place to be. Next, chart 46. Here's the daily view with the symmetry. Again, I spotted this a long time ago. I talked about the symmetry. EEM started downtrending in early 2021 before the market went into a bear market. It had a bullish break in symmetry back here in November, and 
even if you waited for that symmetry to be broken in November, look how far it's rallied. Nice job for any of you who took that. Next. Chapter 47, here's the S&P versus the China market. And look at China here, guys. So here's the S&P at the top. Look at the move in the Chinese market. Just vertical compared to the S&P. So that area has been outperforming too. Next, chapter 48, here's another look at the China market. Again, you had the bullish break in symmetry, which I talked about a couple months ago. So it's been moving nicely higher here. Next, chapter 49, Baba, Alibaba, one of the big names. Now it's meeting a symmetry move here. Again, this is a weekly chart. The dotted line shows you the largest rallies over the last you know, two and a half years. So this is an area where you may find some resistance or we'll see if we break it. All right, now let's move on to some market indicators. Chapter 50, here's the VIX. VIX has been declining with the market. Keep an eye on this lower Bollinger Bands, stuff like that. Next, chapter 40, 51, the NYAD, advanced decline issues. Again, this is the breadth indicator. This is what was bullish back in early January. You had, while the S&P was going sideways, you had the NYAD going straight up. That was super bullish. We want to watch for things like that in the future. And that, of course, preluded the market rally. Next, chapter 52. Now, you do have some negative divergence showing up here. This is the NYAD, but as a 10-day average. Okay, and as that, you have some negative divergence here. Notice in the past when you had some divergences on this, you had pullback. So be aware of that. Next, chapter 53, here's the NASI summation indicator system. It's kind of like a system, but nice guide. I use the two and five exponential moving averages, simple crossovers. It's not perfect by any means, but this last signal has been pretty damn good. It crossed over here in... Early January, right here, near the lows, right around the two six, low 260s. And triple Qs are up over um, or around 297, 397, so, or 297. So, heck of a move. Next. Chapter 54, here's the S&P with the NIMO. It's another McClellan type indicator. So, the other thing that was bullish was in... Early January, you had this go outside its upper Bollinger Bands. That's what this indicates down here. I have it plotted as a uh, bar histogram, I mean. So whenever it first goes above the upper Bollinger Bands after a low, you tend to have a rally for at least a few weeks, kind of like back you could see in the past. So we've had this go on. Now we do have some divergence showing up. Next. Chapter 55, here's the put-call ratio. It, it's getting a little complacent here, 0.84. It could obviously come lower. Again, back in late December, this had spiked up to 191. That was a super, you know, super low-risk buy. I should have loaded the boat. I went long, but I really should have just went extra long when, when you saw that because that had, hadn't seen a spike on that in years like that. Next, chapter 56, here's the... Another NASDAQ, new highs, new lows indicator, the NAHL indicator. And um, you had nice positive divergence developing over the last five, six months. You can see it's worked its way up back here pretty far. This gave an early warning to the bear market as it went, when it went negative in uh, late 2021. Next, chapter 57, here's the S&P versus high yield corporate. Now, you got a little negative divergence developing here, as you can see. Higher high in S&P, lower high on the corporate. And I mention this because high yield corporate started outperforming in late December and early January. So it tends to lead, and now it's underperforming. So it's a negative. Next, chapter 58, here's a 60-minute view. Again, you can see this. High yield corporate's underperforming here, and you can see how in late December, early January, it was outperforming, kind of gave you an early warning that the market would break out. But right now, it's given the opposite. Next, let's go ahead and move to bonds. Chapter 59, here's high yield corporate. Again, it's got a little bear flag potential here short term, so it's been leading down. Maybe we'll see if this breaks down, pulls the market down a little bit with it. Next, 
Chapter 60, here's a TLT 20-year bonds. This is your major resistance up here. This is your support, 50 and 20-day moving averages. We'll see what it does, if it holds support here, if it could take out that resistance or not. Next, chapter 61, here's a weekly view of the 10-year Treasury yield. Remember, you divide by 10 to get the real rate. So 3.518 is 3.518%. So moving average ribbons, they got too wide a couple times last, last year. It's been pulling back. Right now, I see three waves, potential ABC. We have not broken symmetry. Largest pullback there was about 9.6 points. So far, that's what this has been. So it's met symmetry. So this could be an area for rates to go right back up. We'll see. Next, chapter 62, here's the yield curve. The yield curve is still strongly negative, buried. Again, guys, a recession is coming. We'll see how deep it is. All right, let's go ahead and move on to commodities. Chapter 63, DBC, the weekly view. So commodity index was down about 1.3%. Overall, it's been chopping around for the last six months here. Again, long term, it still looks like it's an uptrend to me, but it's been just consolidating here for quite a while. Next, chapter 64, here's the monthly view. reason why I view it, I think this is an uptrend long term is, again, it broke out of this base back here in 2000, late 2020. Move an average ribbon flip positive, and it's bullishly stacked. And you simply just looking at the volume patterns, it looks like a ABC bullish longer term consolidation and an uptrend. You know, started uptrending here. You've had a consolidation in a bull market. Eventually, to me, I think it'll rally up again, kind of like that. Next. Chapter 65, DBC on the daily. Again, just kind of chopping around here lately. 20, 50 day moving average is just below his support. Next, Chapter 66, crude oil weekly view down 2.4%. Next, Chapter 67, here's the daily view. Stalled this resistance trend line last week. Next, Chapter 68, natural gas has been just absolutely killed. So this is a demand zone, which I marked last week, a little Support area, we did bounce off of that a little bit. The moving average ribbons, guys, when they get too expanded, look for reversals. So they are very expanded here. We'll see if we can bounce here if it needs to kind of fill this area. One hell of a decline. Next, chapter 69, here's the daily view. Again, it is diverging here, MACD divergence. You know, we the 9 EMA is your major resistance. You really need to see a good close over that 9 EMA. Next. Chapter 70, here's the ETF UNG. So I own a little bit of this, which I bought light, late last week. You, had, you can notice the pickup in volume here over the average, and then we had a huge volume here. I'm wondering if we're seeing some capitulation here. But again, ultimately, it needs to break this wedge. It needs to hold that, and it needs to get over the 9 EMA. So realize this is still in a very aggressive um, long that I could just be stopped out of. They call natural gas the widow maker. And uh, again, you got to be very adept at trading. You know, got to have a really good pattern to even attempt it. It's easy to get chopped up on this. Next, Chapter 71, copper weekly view. So copper had a, got a good rally off those lows in 2022. But notice it's stalling a little bit near the 61.8% FIB, which you'd expect. Next. Chapter 72, copper on the daily. Again, nice breakout from this trend line, but, you know, got a little overbought. It's consolidating here. Next, Chapter 73, SCCO, the copper stock. This was a long idea of ours back in December. Beautiful cup and handle. Played out awesome. Since then, it's been consolidating. We had an aggressive short up here as well, If you, anyone who took that. Next, Chapter 74, DBA, agriculture. It's also, too, in a long-term uptrend, but it's been consolidating over the last seven months. We'll see if it can break out of this or not. That will not be good for the grocery stores or for those of us who go to the grocery stores. Next, Chapter 75, here's the daily view. Broke out of this little wedge short-term. Next, Chapter 76, coffee. Coffee had a heck of a rally last week, up nine and three quarters percent. Look at this perfect textbook. 
this nice long trend line base which you broke out of price rallied off of it as support nice divergence there as well next chapter said he's seven years the daily view so since the downtrend from August, you have a bullish symmetry break here. So these are the largest rallies, the dotted trend lines. So you have a bullish break in the symmetry. So now you want to look to buy a pullback. A pullback should form a higher low. Don't tell Starbucks. Next, chart 4078. Here's the tradable ETF, Joe. Again, same analysis applies. You know, if you get a nice little pullback here, ABC, that should be a buying opportunity. Next. Trevor 79, uranium. So this is the uranium ETF. I just think it looks super bullish long term. What do you got here? It came out of a sta stage wine, stage one Weinstein base. Okay. R look up Stan Weinstein if you don't know who he is. He had a famous book back in the 90s, late 90s. But broke out of here. You had a rally up from the 2020 area to late 2021 and since that time you simply have a big coil forming here look at the volume patterns look at the moving average ribbon is pinching remember it was bearishly stacked here went bullishly stacked here it's pinching rsi this 50 percent area was resistance it's now support to me this looks bullish long term like this eventually will go something like this next Chapter 80, here's the weekly view. Again, it also had a wedge pattern, which I talked about. This AB, very complex ABC, ABC, which we busted out of three weeks ago. So URA is one of those I like long-term, guys. Next, moving to crypto, Charber 81, Bitcoin. It's had a heck of a rally out of here, out of this base. Still holding up well. Next. Chapter 82, here's the weekly. So what you have in the weekly here is five waves. So this has led to a good rally. Down here is kind of a long-term support area, but we had five waves here. Whenever you have five waves, guys, you look for a decent counter, a, a decent trend reversal, which we've gotten. Next, Chapter 83, one of the Bitcoin ETFs, uh, GBTC. Again, all these have really moved nicely from the January timeframe. Next, Chapter 84, Riot. This is what I'm monitoring. Again, beautiful move out of this bull wedge in December. Right now, you have a potential ascending triangle forming. Next, Chapter 85, US dollar. So this fifth wave high we marked back few months back has been playing out. Look at that decline. Next, Jabber 86. Here's the weekly view again. So far, it's retraced just over 50% of that big move up off the 2021 lows. Next, Jabber 87. Here's the daily view monitoring this little channel. You have some MACD divergence. If we start to see a rally in the dollar here, that could correspond perhaps with some weakness in the market, okay, for February. Next, Chapter 88, Japanese yen. I pointed out this bullish break in the symmetry you know, back in October, and this has obviously played out fantastic. Next, let's move to precious metals. Chapter 89, gold. Gold has had a great move since the um, November timeframe. This is my long-term view. Again, this goes back to 2007, this chart. So under the bullish view, we, this could be in some sort of wave five here that will eventually go to a new high. But again, I don't expect it, guys, to go to a new high like this. You'll get some consolidations along the way, okay? Next, Chubber 90, here's the weekly view. Just over the 61.8 Fib area. Next, Chubber 91, gold on the daily. It's going to stair-stepping up. Again, you had a beautiful long entry back here in November. You've had to a series of higher lows. This could be a potential stop out area right now. Next, Jabber 92 silver. Also nice rally out of this demand zone. Unable to break above this downtrend line though, long-term downtrend line. Next, Jabber 93, here's the daily chart. You got a little umbrella top look to it here. Keep an eye on this, that's your base support. Breaking that would open a door for a pullback, maybe the 200 day moving average. Next, 
Moving on to the stocks, Sharper 94 GDX weekly. So GDX, guys, stalled. Perfect rejection right at the 61.8 FIB retracement. It's always an area we're going to struggle from first. Does that mark the end of the rally totally, or are we just going to pause here for a bit, you know, and then break it eventually? We'll see. Next, Sharper 95. Here's the daily chart. Still uptrending, but again, we are diverging here. And uh, these dotted lines represent your trailing stops. So effectively, if you went long back in November, you could have raised your, your initial stop would have been here at number one, and you could have raised your stop at least five times. Very, it's a very simple way to raise your stops to try to give things wiggle room and to stay in a position. Next, Trevor 96, GDXJ, same, similar look. Next, Sharper 97 AGI, one of the gold stocks I mentioned a couple weeks ago, had a bullish cup and handle look. It is struggling up here a little bit. It may need to consolidate a little bit. Moving average ribbons pretty wide, but I do like it longer term. It looks good. What it could do is could also form some sort of cup and handle like I'm showing here. Next, Let's move into some individual stocks. Chart 98, Apple, Crapple. We always got to keep an eye on that. Apple rallied off that low in January. Got above the 50-day moving average, which is a positive. Now it's up near the 200-day moving average. We'll see what it does up in here. Next, Chart 99, Tesla. A lot of people talking about Tesla. So we talked about this fifth wave low in early January. We said that was a low-risk area to take along. And look at the rally. It's up you know, roughly 80% from this low, okay? Now, at the time, we've been viewing this as a fourth wave, but it's gotten, it hasn't totally negated that yet, but it's definitely a big move. But we expected a good rally from there, and that's what it's gotten. Next, Jabber 100, here's another chart. Now, on Tesla, look, this 180 area is an important area. You could see it was support back here in early 2021, so... This is a important resistance area. If it gets above this, your next target would be around this 200, low 200 area. Next, Trevor 101. Here's a two-hour view, just showing you from a technical standpoint, guys. On the two-hour, notice your resistance in early January broke, was back tested. That was a that was your super low risk area. When you break resistance and back test it, that's your area to take a long. Next. Some long ideas we've had, Charber 102, Seabay, beautiful cup and hand, and look at this sucker just go up and up and up. You could still be in the sucker with some sort of trailing stop. Next, Charber 103, Disney. This was a long idea of mine four weeks ago. You had a falling wedge with MACD divergence into this support. It was a very beautiful looking long textbook. It's been a nice move out of here. This would be your symmetry target up around 120. Next, Trevor 104, CX, another long idea of mine. It was a bull flag a week ago. It's been playing out here nicely. Next, Trevor 105, GNK, another one that's played out nicely from this 1575 resistance. Perhaps at this time, maybe a swing stop could be right around this 1675 area. Next, Trevor 106, WBX, another long idea a week ago. Resistance 475, very nice percentage move. Next. Trevor 107, QUOT, Ascending Triangle. Long idea from a week ago. It's been playing out beautifully. Next, Trevor 108, FRTX, another one that has played out. I had a clean resistance at $2. Getting to 254. That's a heck of a percentage move. Next, Trevor 109, Sophie, another long idea. It's played out well. Next, Trevor 110, Amarin was a long idea late last week. Trying to trigger on Friday off the highs, but I do like the volume patterns here. Next, Trevor 111, SGEN from one of our astute members. Got a rounded base, rounded bowl pattern here. Started breaking out last week. Next, Trevor 112, CENX, the aluminum stock. It's coming out of this basing pattern, but I want to see volume pick up a little bit. Still, I'm long some of this for a swing. Next, Trevor 113 PB weekly chart, monitoring this long-term trend line. I didn't look at any other trade ideas yet. 
I will do so this evening and post them later. All right, guys, have a wonderful rest of your Sunday evening and or good morning if you're listening to this on Monday instead. Remember, these weekend newsletters, guys, are good not just for Sunday. They're good for really the whole week. Talk to you later. See you later this week. Take care.